Okay, good evening. Uh, India, the political scene of India is going through a big uh, change now. The general elections is just nine months away from here, and uh, two alliances, the ruling NDA and the opposition parties, have started their work, and uh, the opposition parties are meeting together at Bangalore. At the same time, the uh, NDA, the ruling front, is also meet, holding the meeting at New Delhi. So our uh, on our panel to discuss this uh, day and the uh, right, impact that it's going to have on Indian politics. We have on board Vegri Samarshan, editor of the item. We have Sharat Prathan. He's joining from Lucknow. Uh, he's a senior journalist and a political analyst. And then Joy Sandosh, he's also a political analyst and writer. He's joining from Delhi. Vegri Ji, you have just stepped out of the meeting uh, in Bangalore where the opposition parties, the 26 opposition parties, I believe, they are coming together and discuss the strategy for the next election. So, what do you have for us right now? You can give us the right current update. Well, I just stepped out of the meeting place, which is the Taj Western uh, near the governor's house in uh, Bangalore. So, it, it was a long meeting, I mean, longer than expected, actually. I mean, uh, it started around 11 and it continued uh, for quite a few hours. And of course, finally, they have come up with a, uh, with a, with a, with an organization with a, with a, with a kind of broad alliance, uh, which of course, uh, which if the acronym is India. The positioning is that you know that India is not inclusive, and uh, India is inclusive. That is the that is the kind of positioning that they have done. But as far as I know, uh, there have been some discussion on the on the desirability of this name. Uh, as uh, from the, the inside information is that Nitish Kumar is not very happy with the name. Finally, he kind of uh, agreed to the majority view on this. Uh, uh, he said that you know that perhaps you know uh, India, India, India will be sounding sounding like NDA. It may not be very good. But uh, overall, I think it was a very positive meeting, and uh, the leaders have gone uh, left Bangalore are leaving from Bangalore in a very positive mood. Uh, I think that the shot in the arm for them was that, you know, that there was a very concerted effort yesterday to prevent Sarat Pawar and Supriya Saliya from attending this meeting. Uh, in fact, uh, Ajit Pawar's uh, uh, and Praful Patel's so-called sudden visit to meet Pawar day before yesterday, Praful Patel's uh, uh, sudden visit to meet Pawar day before yesterday, followed by Ajit Pawar's meeting yesterday. And I think you know, the, there was a there was a there was a kind of atmosphere that was being created, uh, uh, suggesting that Pawar may not be attending this meeting. So Pawar's presence has come as a big shot in the arm, and then Pawar apparently was one of the persons who very strongly advocated this India name. From what I hear, uh, from what I hear, the name was uh, uh, very strongly pushed by uh, Sarath Pawar and also the South Indian leaders. I mean, including the Congress leaders and the Dravida Munitra Karnam leaders, and also the left leaders. So basically, this is where we stand. Uh, the uh, the alliance has gone with a very positive thing, and uh, they are feeling that you know that the very fact that uh, uh, the NDA has been forced to convene its meeting also the same day in the evening after the meeting in Bangalore is also uh, it kind of points towards the kind of uh, grassroots level impact that this uh, this alliance is has made or is it making? So this is this is the broad picture. Uh, interestingly, there was a lot of discussion on uh, in, in in after the meeting. Uh, the individual le leaders I met, uh, a lot of them kind of pointed out how a large number of smaller Manipur uh, North northeastern parties have been kind of incorporated into the NDA, uh, like with a, with a magic wand or something like that, and. Uh, they are saying that the, the kind of incorpority of this, uh, Manipur is burning. People of northeast are generally very upset about the situation in Manipur and the overall situation in the northeast. But still, uh, the NDA has been able to, the, or the BJP leadership has been able to force the uh, smaller uh, northeastern parties to join the NDA. So this is the larger picture that I get from here. I am here for a couple of more questions, and uh, as I was telling you earlier, because I have, I have to hit the road again. And uh, all of us know how ba worse the Bangalore traffic is. Mm -hmm. So uh, carry on, Anand. Now I so, think I have uh, what I. You you may you may uh, be on the line <laughs> as we discuss it, and we'll come back to you later on. Uh, so Sarath uh, Pradhanji, so yeah. as uh, Magnesia has now updated, 
the yeah. opposition parties are harping on the element of inclusiveness they are bringing the inclusiveness into the discussion uh, right and the nda is meeting today the same day so what can what can be their reaction and what what are how are, how can we expect them to respond to that well uh, well i feel that what the venkatesh said you know ba- bangalore may be notorious for many impediments on the road but here it seems that uh, india is marching ahead in bangalore and india per se the the new alliance and india as a country as well i feel then because this opposition the opposition meet is lending a lot of hope for democratic values to prevail in this country that is why i said india so and they have been able to make some headway it's very interesting and it's very significant considering that uh, you know there were so many hurdles and so many hurdles created by the ruling dispensation also and despite all that they have been able to at least sit down and work together and make a good start and well begun is half done you know it's an old saying and i feel that the nda reaction to this and now i would say modi's reaction because obviously it is uh, somewhere the prime minister who is masterminding all that there obviously it's very obvious so their reaction seems to be some kind of a uh, you know it is reflecting the frustration you know all this while all this while we've been hearing bjp talking about one man army of narendra modi and the in, in hindi the slogan was ek modi sab par bhari ek akela modi sab par bhari so my question to nda is that what what happened to that one man army why do they need 38 army men now because the fact that they have been able to rope in 38 uh, uh, parties or i would say more of for leaders rather than parties because uh, as everybody believes that there aren't so many parties existing and there may be small outfits which have been which have sprung up only on the eve of this meeting so that they could put up a a, a facade of uh, showing higher number it's a, it's a game of one up and ship and a game of numbers that nda has uh, uh, created and in order to give this you know create a perception that they have a larger support of parties in the country but everybody obviously knows at least at least those who are familiar with the political game that actually there aren't so many parties it is only a a posturing done largely to give this impression across the country and to the rest of the world that nda led by bjp had larger numbers they may be having a large number of the, the mps there but what will happen in 24 will depend a lot on how this meeting of 26 uh, opposition parties it actually plays out and how they actually come together to really put up a fight with the uh, uh, by put up a fight against the bjp now how they do it it's a matter of time but i would again repeat that well begun in half that okay we got your point like but uh, you have raised up a pertinent issue like the india has always fought with one name in the top Uh, Narendra Modi leading from the front. My question to Joyce and Rosh, uh, Joyce Rosh is: uh, uh, NDA continues to play the Narendra Modi card, the single leader, Ek Modi Bhari Padega. So that slogan is there. On the other hand, the reports coming from Bangalore by the midday said Karge, Karge went on record saying that the Congress is not keen on taking a leadership or the prime ministership. So what could be the ideal positioning for uh, India or the new India Alliance, the opposition alliance? which uh, which incidentally india stands for uh, indian national democratic inclusive alliance thank you what could be the thank you i thank you i thank you i think thank you i think for organizing this uh, discussion with very pertinent time and uh, space that you have provided to all of us uh you know naming a child is the most e- easiest thing you know so to name the child is uh, so the euphoria is still there sabhi rishtedar log aate hain mithai batti and all So that's the easiest thing to do. To grow up the child and to nourish it is the challenge. Okay. So the, ch- the ch- challenge. So it's too early to be optimistic about uh, whatever fancy acronym we have. And suddenly, this is throwing back the game back to Modi. You know, because he is the master of the making acronyms. 
and these people would have hired someone from that side to do this uh, maybe so uh, so they have an they have a name so the child has a name so it is up to these people these fathers and mothers to grow them up nourish them up and you know to understand the ta- can it be a formidable for formidable force to come up with you know both the alliances that we are looking at certainly this is a good development for the democracy because we have a force to reckon with we have a we have an opposition now uh, so it's a 2024 is no more a kind of a game which it, of for which the tickets won't be sold you know it would be a houseful a game there would be strict uh, opposition and there would be a lot of uh, a lot of competition that would be happening now that there is formation from both sides but both sides come with their own strengths and weaknesses uh the dancer was just mentioning about modi's uh, idea about you know vote modi ko dena hai aap nishan ko dena hai kon aapka mat aapka ummeedwar hai ye nahi dekhna hai he had the audacity to say this uh, in couple of campaigns in uh, himachal pradesh and all and so uh, we should we should blame ourselves you know uh, like he won he won karnataka he said that yeah yeah even in himachal he said you know ki aap ummeedwar ka face mat dekhiye aap modi ko vote dijiye so we have come to that extent you know so but every currency every branding campaign uh, we know has a has a gestation period has an expiry period so karnataka if it was was an early sign that the that that selling of modi's name in has come to a period where it where it is now descending if it is that we will have to see it in madhya pradesh rajasthan chatisgarh and telangana if it is a continuous graph going down and modi would no more be a Are uh, selling polls to happen? So, can Modi can Modi become a liability for NDA? Would would it become a liability? So already seniors like Pradhan sir and Venkatesh are already saying that a person who said he got KLA is now uh, uh-huh. in hands of thirty eight people. So it matters a lot. So we need to say for this alliance, put Modi uh, as a as a paradox would become an uh, become a uh, become a liability. On the other side. Congress has come a long way, you know, nine years of being nowhere and uh, being humiliated the way it has been. Just that it has not been thrown out of the Akbar Road, twenty-four Akbar Road yet. It can only happen. Maybe it would happen after the twenty-four. Ah, look, it's a price. Congress has come a lot, long way. There are a lot, lot of lessons that is read. It has shed away a lot of legacy issues, and one of the bright. Point bright points by bright star in these alliances none other than Rahul Gandhi. I remember as a PTI correspondent in 2006 traveling with him. Uh, he was just made a new general secretary and he was asked to campaign uh, for uh, Uttar Pradesh. So I, I I asked him what is the impediment in the growth of Congress. So this boy he was a, he was a young boy then. Uh, so he said he says 36 37 year old guy he says. i am the impediment i am the roadblock so i said you know can you please explain a uh, more on this so he said he he, he very uh, very cunningly said you know pti ke liye to chhota sa story chahiye matlab pti ke liye chhota sa story chahiye try explaining it he says you know until and unless congress leaves out this dependability on a family see rahul gandhi has to come out to campaign to revive uh, party in uttar pradesh Until and unless that ends up, Congress won't. Uh, so he had the guts to say that. Yeah. So soon after that, he started on that NSUI where Lingdo was brought in, NSUI and Youth Congress. There were elections to be held there. Although all those things did not work out because Congress has a typical, uh, typical uh, uh, burden of uh, wherein all the leaders of the Congress are there to exploit and make use of the party wherein. when it comes to building the party they all look upon the gandhi family okay so gandhi family would fight for them would work for them and when it comes to me her enjoying the benefits of the fruits of the uh, regi they, they would come back and so what rahul gandhi has done all this while and uh, this bangalore meeting at india would have a lot of uh, resonance of the bharat jodo yatra so you all seniors who have, would have traveled and you know i had a small uh, experience doing that you know they could you know congress party a, a core party which is core political party could manage to keep it is up keep it a political actually 
they could actually keep a political the 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 Bharat Jodo Yatra from Trivandrum till Kashmir. I cannot imagine a Congress uh, leader traveling without flex boats all the all the while of all the general secretaries, treasurers. If you see a small rally of any Congress leader, you will find thousands of flex boats and all thousands of party leaders doing schemes and all those. But Bharat Jodo Yatra was miraculously Congress could keep it a political. And in this process of our political churning, which was happening in the party, two things have happened. One, they could build in linkages with a lot of civil society organizations, which is kind of a silent chain, which maybe not many media houses would have noted or have, because that was not a larger story and it was not very, uh, very, uh, very, very overtly happening. It was very silently happening. A lot of a lot of civil society organizations, SHG groups, cooperative groups have, could come across because it was not a Congress uh, Bharat Jodo Yatra. They could come across, rally along. That was happening. Second right. thing, that was an opportunity and I think Congress very, very, uh, very, uh, very uh, utilized it. The factor is that they could bring in a lot of new young people into that rally, into that Bharat Jodo Yatra. Other than four or five or say six, seven senior leaders, none were given an entry to, to that Bharat Jodo Yatra action. Mm -hmm. uh, the chief ministers and the state leaders had an opportunity when it was passing through the state, but the all through consistent the Bharat Jodo Yatra, it was all an affair of young leaders and Kanaya Kumar and all those people, and which actually gives in a lot of hope for Congress party to shed away its burden of so-called, uh, you know, complacent leaders and bring in some in innovative ideas. So the result of Bharat Jodo Yatra is that Delhi unit is now talking of, can I, can we have Kanaya Kumar as, as our Delhi unit leader? So there are such, such innovative things are happening in the past. So, so you have a person out there in, in the in new India alliance who can vouch for his honesty, who can vouch for his uh, people connect, he has gone through and met people. So a lot of this alliance partners, you know, one thing is for sure, and Sharadji would agree with me, all these alliance, pa alliance partners are actually fighting for their own survival. They, yeah. might do. they, they, they would be, they, they would show it that they're fighting for the country or whatnot, but they're actually fighting for their own survival. If it doesn't happen, if the change doesn't happen in 2024, a lot of this vintage stories would be no more relevant. And I think I think they they said it in their in their uh, logo when they say United we stand. You see the the uh, uh, the pledge uh, chart that is put behind the the big flex which is put behind the the main uh, hole. It says United we stand. And yeah, United we stand is a political compulsion. No, United we stand to survive. Ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh, uh. <laughs> With how far, Anand, I'll just uh, add a couple of things and I have to leave. Uh, so I'll just take off from what uh, Joy has been saying. Uh, so basically the point is, uh, as uh, Joy very rightly pointed out, uh, the, the India alliance has come up. Uh, uh, so to try to differentiate between uh, India and India alliance, we'll have to say India alliance. The India Alliance has come up, and uh, uh, it's of course uh, the, the the birth of a new baby. Of course, is always very exciting and all that. But I think the the most important question, as he was very rightly saying, is how well these parties will be able to do the seat adjustments in various states. I think that is a very important question that they will be facing, and already uh, many of these parties are trying to address these issues, and in fact. I met some of the leaders from uh, North India, especially the the states of Uttar Pradesh and Bihar, who were saying that you know that we will uh, yeah, we we have started working on it and we will come up with a good formula. You wait and see. Uh, there will not be any rather uh, there will not be any big problems in that. So that is one thing, one feedback that I have to give. The other thing that one interesting quote that I heard from a Tamil Nadu uh, politician, the DMK politician, he said, "How can Modi ask?" Uh, people to defeat India. He cannot ask people uh -huh. to defeat uh -huh. India. <laughs> or any BJP leader, how can they ask people to defeat India? So I think you know, they feel that they have scored a, a point there. Let us see how it develops. And uh, with these words, I will 
uh, I'll have to leave. But then, uh, Sarath and Joy, you continue. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, Anand, please carry forward. Anand, coming yeah. back to your question. Yeah, who will be the, who will be the face of India Alliance? Yeah, so I would all say from today onwards, the Noida channels would be having this prime time. You know, who is your who is your leader? Uh, 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 yeah, uh, everyone, including Sharadji and everyone who go to the panels would be asked this. You know, who, yeah. who leader, you know but still, uh, the fact of the matter is, till three thirty in the evening on the day when Prime Minister Manmohan Singh was announced as the Prime Minister, he didn't know that he would be the Prime Minister. None of right. it, none of us in the None of us journalists even knew that he would be the prime minister. So surprises can come, and there are more than uh, uh, able leaders happening. But uh, Anand, you had a very interesting point about the difference between the uh, Vidhan Sabha and the Lok Sabha elections. What ha actually happens in the Lok Sabha elections is that everything, everything in the election is pitted against one man, and that is Narendra Modi. Okay, and uh, what? Congress could successfully deviate, digress on this was in Himachal Pradesh and in Bangalore uh, and in Karnataka. They did not let it become a Modi versus other kind of a camp. In Himachal Pradesh, it was a totally local issue. Other way, one ran one pension, mangai, unemployment, all this stuff. In Karnataka, it was all about the corruption. There were distractions happening, and uh, at, at the end of the game, they very cleverly played on this Bajrang Dal issue and all those stuff. But the reality, we, we may agree it or not, Modi has a he man figure. Okay. Modi is a Superman. Now, if I tell my son that Superman will not fly, then he will actually be angry of me. He will feel bad about me. Okay. He'll say, Papa, please don't talk bad about Superman. Okay. So, <laughs> You go around and say anything about Narendra Modi or to defeat Narendra Modi, people say that he is so hard and he is doing so much work and he is doing so much work and he is doing so much work and he is doing so much work. So one thing which uh, this India alliance will have to be very cautious about is they should not look like an alliance which is, which is, the, which is with the one sole purpose of defeating Modi. Not getting on. Indians are not interested in hitting out on Modi or defeating Modi because they are not still convinced that India or Modi is detrimental to the country. They know that things are happening bad. They know economy is in a mess. They know everything is in a mess. But very comfortably they say it is a it's a global phenomenon and all those stuff. We need to do some sacrifice and all those stuff. They are still not convinced that Modi is the reason for it. So at this juncture what India alliance should very cleverly think of is that they should not make this an alliance, an anti-Modi alliance. If it does, they are actually failing in their purpose. Thank you. In other words, uh, Chalaji, uh, Modi's campaign or the NDA campaign is entirely on a Congress book Bharat. Is it the, are we witnessing the end of that campaign, the Bharat, the Congress book Bharat campaign? Well, uh, BJP, I think it's rather late in the day to have not realized that their mission of uh, building an India minus Congress uh, is over. Because after the defeat, their defeats in Himachal and Karnataka, that I think, and then the elections which are due in four other states, where again BJP is uh, not, in, not in a very comfortable position, and for all you know, Congress may re-emerge there once again, then BJP will have to really think about its much-touted uh, uh, campaign of uh, India Congress Mukbarat. Now their problem, uh, the their main focus has to be on how to sustain that aura of Narendra Modi. You are right that you know, people down the line do not want to hear anything against. It. That is because they have systematically built him as a hero, and Indians by tradition have been engaged in hero worship. Traditionally, if you see historically. Hero worship is a is a very very in thing here, and it's in the deep in their culture, and they have been he, Modi has been built into a hero, a larger than life hero, by through a very systematic, sustained publicity campaign. You know the kind of money that is spent on publicity by the ruling dispensation it is mind boggling. And and they that and not just public the, apart from money. You, they've used all kinds of tactics. The mainstream media is completely sub subservient to the to the government, 
and whatever narrative that when you have media under your control then you build your own narrative we have seen this happening in history in uh, certain countries in the 30s we we all know about that how the first thing that the uh, the the ruler of that day the dictator of that day that had done was to control the media and to bring media under their thumb when you have media under your control which very strategically modi has done again in here then you build your own narrative the narrative that you want people to believe and they have succeeded in that by, by whether by book or by crook they have done it and media today either it is bought over with tons of money flowing or it is under intimidation it is visible today thankfully it is the to you and i are talking like this because this is on the social media and if i would not be surprised if in 2024 if this dispensation reappears reemerges then for all you know uh, uh, this shop would close because their target is going to be that uh, the social media youtube is going to be on their main target they they can't tolerate this and you know dissent is something which it does not is not in their scheme of things at all the most most fascist fascist regimes have this in a red uh you know uh, com- com- complete aversion to dissent it is complete aversion to dissent dissent and they would anything do anything to throttle independent voices we have seen how it's happened all across the country how various so many journalists have been put behind bar i mean there, there was this case of this kerala journalist kappan who was arrested in up he was before he could reach atras yes yeah, sandeep bhai yeah, sandeep kappan and he was in behind bar for two years so you know uh, they for them intolerance against intol- their independent voices they have no room in this dispensation so with that with all that that power that they have at their and their command they are able to do what they want to they want to you know bombard people if they are often with a lot of lies which people are compelled to believe you know there goes the old saying if you keep bombarding people with a lot of lies they sometimes the more often than not they forget their own truth and they start believing the lies to be true which is be the happening i mean i'm I, I, that, this is no exaggeration. We see so many times you find even the prime minister uh, making these statements, which are far from truth, far from facts, incorrect facts, but nobody talks about it because the entire media plays it down. It's only in this small-time uh, social media like ours that it is discussed with the result. But mind you. there are still a lot of people a large number of people who want to hear that independent voice and their number seems to be growing because i can see that from the you know now that everything is uh, crystal clear on the electronic on this uh, thanks to internet you can get to see how many views you got so you will know precisely how many people are ready to believe what you say and the 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 way the social media that has grown over the years and the response that it is getting is a very encouraging sign in this atmosphere where democratic values are just being kicked around and crushed so there is hope and i am an optimist so i still believe this uh, meeting in bangalore is a good beginning you know we can't expect overnight uh, magic we can't expect more magic is only possible with narendra modi it's uh, it's not easy for anybody else to play magic so uh, with this then uh, making a good there will be a lot of hurdles there will be a lot of a cup but if they are all sincere in ensuring their own survival then they will ensure the survival of democracy by remaining together and sticking along by sinking their petty differences which they all have which in their naturally ideological or political they will have to go ahead yes sir sharad ji you are rightly pointed out that uh, the nda uh, particularly modi ji has always been uh, indulged in creating false narratives or fake narratives which uh, 
gathered currency very fastly, very and they, 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 that that's a base of their campaign also. Uh, so uh, now the big task that is before the India Alliance is to create a, an alternative narrative which is convincing, as convincing as the Modi narrative or the Indian narrative. So uh, my question is, uh, with this alliance picked up, uh, which is a which is rather a very loose gathering of parties with different interests, will they be able to hold on or create uh, such a narrative powerful enough to counter the narrative coming from a single point, when, where, as it is the case with NDA? Rudanji. That, but it's me. Okay. Well, well, I, I feel that uh, there is enough reason to believe that they are all sincere and committed to this cause of unity because of their individual survival, all right. But at the end of the day, they have this, uh, they have all joined under this umbrella to also, and that besides protecting their individual interests, to also have the larger, in the larger hope of the survival of democracy. I mean, that, that is non denied, cannot be denied. And if that is the objective and there is commitment and sincerity, then I don't think there should be much of a problem in building a, a narrative which can counter and a convincing narrative which can counter the narrative of Mr. Narain Modi. Narain Modi, I'm saying because the BJP he is larger than the BJP and it is his narrative which, which sells, which gels with the people of the country. Yet, since there is still a large section, and which is, you know, largely their narrative revolves around Hindutva, and Hindutva also not in the in the manner that they want. Their Hindu brand of Hindutva believes in breeding hatred, which is not the Hindu religion. Hindu religion never talks about uh, hatred. But their whole design is on forging a communal divide on the strength of their the hatred which they have very systematically built and propagated. So now in order to counter that, they have to be, it's a very, it's a tightrope walk for the opposition to at the same time because they cannot afford to create and allow any kind of confusion to prevail in when they when they talk about the, the Hindutva and the Hindu religion, Hinduism, it's a very tightrope walk that to convince people will be a difficult task. They have to ultimately make people understand because the kind of hatred that has been built, it is there is no scope. People have shut their minds. People, the minds have been captured to make them believe that what the BJP and its allies are doing is not in the larger interest of democratic values and in larger interest of the country. Now, how they do it is something which they have to plan, work out, and see, and at the same time, blending with this, they have to reason out and uh, explain to the people how how other vital issues like unemployment, poverty, price rise, which affects everybody, is more important than Hindu-Muslim, which how they do it, okay, again, I would repeat, it's, it's a difficult task for the opposition to do. But I still feel that if there is commitment and without having to lose, uh, I mean, they don't stand to lose anything. The only, how, but they cannot allow BJP to twist it as if to say that they, the, this whole blah, band of uh, opposition parties are anti Hindu, which BJP is very smart at doing. You say a thing and they give it a such a twist. And it's then it is easy for them to convince those people whose minds are shut and uh, not open to reason. Yes, you are you're right in saying that uh, they work on exclusivity and not inclusivity. And Joy Ji, okay. uh, the India Alliance have started very well, as you have rightly said, you have taken a positive step in bringing that inclusivity into the discussion. Uh, so the pertinent issues that uh, Pradhan Ji has pointed out, there are many pertinent issues which can they, they can use as a platform for bringing them together. But there could be issues like uh, the Uniform Civil Code which can destroy the narratives that the uh, NDA is working on or relying on to in their run up to the 2020, 2024 uh, general elections. And so, what could be the major hurdles that the India Alliance can feel, Georgie? I mean, you know, the present situation 
uh, is both a uh, opportunity as well as a challenge. Okay, it's a, it's a strength as well as weakness. Actually, I'll try to explain this uh, dichotomy. You know, uh, we have been talking about building narrative and counter narrative and all, but how BJP works uh, ever since Adwani lost the 2009 election and 2010 onwards, uh, the uh, account goes to the Israeli firm and they take off, they take on the uh, PR. The vibrant Gujarat uh, PR company takes over the complete uh, BJP campaign, all those stuff. Ever since that, you know, things have been cut down into the say, for example, I'll get right explain to the example Nehru has to be criticized, socialism has to be criticized. So they won't come into the narrative aspect of socialism, capitalism, and try and explain the ills of socialism. They will just say Nehru was a womanizer. They will just say, you know, so they will character assassinate Nehru. So ultimately, when the Nehru is uh, demonized, everything that what he stands for is demonized. You know? Say if Nehru said, you know, health and education uh, for every child in this country should be a birthright, and we should we should try and work out for that. So if Nehru, whatever he said, he, he as a person, he lacks credibility, and whatever he said as uh, lacks the credibility. So that's a very simple thing. How uh, the BJP. I won't say BJP, but uh, the Mr. Modi Shah syndicate, the the, cor the, so the corporate lobby works within the BJP. The second thing is, ever since 2004, uh, when the Bharat Uday campaign, the India Shining campaign was successfully defeated by the Congress, uh, by their uh, grassroots strength, uh, time has lapsed, okay? So, uh, in this... 20 years, almost 20 years, the, the rules of politics has changed. Uh, the, the turf has changed. Okay, so it's like India going uh, from a from a mud turf to astro turf and playing hockey. Okay, so things have completely changed. <laughs> All these leaders who are there at the India lines are those who are baptized in the old rules. They all were baptized in the old rules. They would still have the tendency to play the old game. Whereas, whereas the game has totally changed. Again, a couple of things that could work in benefit of the India Alliance is that it's a 180 degree situation. The, 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 you know, it was 2008 when the Barack Obama campaign happened in the US and uh, we, we started, I, I, I as a BJP correspondent started hearing the Advani for a PM campaign and a lot was positioned around it. It failed, but then the the whole of the uh, campaign of Narendra Modi was around social media. You know how to uh, how to cultivate social media and ensure that certain thoughts are uh, thoughts are you know. Uh, so the same thing is now being used. So this social media is now come to haunt Modi regime. A lot of things which the new the, the regular channels won't say are being openly discussed, openly shared, openly being circulated with the social media. It's in your hand, in your handheld device, things are coming to you. Factoids are coming to you. Okay, people are celebrating. In, uh, so if if an India alliance has happened, people who have nothing to do with India alliance are actually celebrating that this thing has come out. So this so the whole idea of using social media. So it, it, it has turned out to be a two-edged sword. You know, what worked for, for Narendra Modi once in 2019 and 14 may work against it. So that's one thing. Now, India Alliance has to be very particularly take care of two things. One uh, is that they will have to fight not just Narendra Modi Raji, the ministry. So say, for example, 2024 May elections, from December onwards, Mr. Modi and his ministries will plan every day at least five inaugurations at your at the taxpayers' expenses. Okay, so that would be amplified by all the channels. So they will have to actually try and use uh, cheaper ways of uh, message. Second thing is uh, the uh, BJP alliance as BJP campaign is now no more a small campaign. It's a it's a larger than life campaign. If Modi has to do a campaign, there has to be, say, for example, five, six GB jibs to happen. There has to be a hundred uh, uh, drone cameras and all this. So the BJP campaign cannot happen cheap now. 
it cannot happen with low expenses. They are now used to grandeur us. But at the same time, the India lines, particularly Congress, will have to learn and practice to do lean and people friendly campaign. Because people are actually fed up of, fed up with I was in Bangalore when one when Narendra Modi roadshow happened. Uh, after the roadshow, I tried to ask people uh, who is the candidate, who is the MLA candidate. They don't know. So I said, you know, are you a BJP supporter? I don't know. We are not a BJP supporter. Why are you here? We are here to just see Narendra Modi. Okay. So the grandeur can be sometimes misleading all. So the same people were actually attracted to the uh, Congress campaign who were, who were talking about the portholes, who were talking about the commission, who were talking about the corruption. So finally, you know, the results, what happened. Okay. So same way, say for example, the national highway, uh, the grandeur, Bangalore to uh, Bangalore to Mysore, or uh, you can uh, switch on your car and reach there within an hour or one and a half or two hours. Okay. So uh, what happened? The distance between Bangalore to Mysore, BJP lost all the seats. They had some seats in Mysore and some seats in Bangalore. So I was talking to a campaigner uh, within the BJP. Why it happened? He said, you know, uh, Bangalore wale ko fayda hua, Mysore jaldi ja sakte hai. Mysore wale ko uh, fayda hua, Bangalore aa sakte hai. Par beach ke gaha wala ko koi, koi fayda nahi hua. <laughs> so, so the same way, so Congress will have to be actually learn to do this clean people friendly campaign, which Oh, BJP cannot because they cannot come down on the way the grandeur which they have become habitual of. The most important thing is the money power. BJP has the money power with it. The industry is backing it openly, covertly, overtly backing it by one means or the other, and it would happen more. You remember Pramod Mahajan saying uh, there was a, there were a time in uh, 2004 when uh, it was saying that आप हमें पैसा मत दीजिए पर कांग्रेस को भी मत दीजिए so that was the time. So 2004 is now going to repeat. 2024 is going to happen again. Uh, what 2004 was. Congress and India Alliance, except for some of the state governments, wherein some funding would happen, they would be in dearth of funding. So they will have to actually work out on a lean people friendly campaign. And uh, just before we wind up, because this is going to be, uh, this has been a very interesting discussion about the different aspects of the India Alliance. Before we wind up, we let's once again go back to the strength of India Alliance, which is a very cohesive narrative to counter the uh, strategies of NDA, especially the strategies of uh, Narendra Modi and uh, Amit Shah combined. But uh, you need a strategician on the other side to do that, and most expected name is definitely Sharad Pawarji. So Sharad Pawar, but Sharad Pawar happens to be himself in trouble. Uh, so, how cohesive can the can we expect the India Alliance attack to be, uh, or the narrative to be? Pradhanji and uh, Jaji can add on to that. I I I feel that uh, it will take. We will have to give them a little time. And uh, well, considering that uh, Sharad Pawar uh, has so much experience and is the tallest of the veterans there, but. Uh, I don't think it will be so easy to for the other parties to allow him to set the narrative. I think they will have to build a team. It will have to be a cohesive team, some kind of a committee, which will go into the details because otherwise, otherwise, you know, right from day one, there will be dissensions. If they do not bring in people, you know, they have to have a democratic uh, setup. At least, you know, even if it is a five-member, six-member committee, it will make will be able to build a consensus. Yeah, and building a common building ticket consensus. is one of the agenda points. Will yeah, yeah. So, so you know, the, you we need to give them time. It's too early to believe to expect that overnight they would come out with a the, okay, so and so chalk out a strategy. So we we'll, we need to give them time. It's a for the, for the time being, they have made a good start, and it appears that. Uh, this will show some positive. This, despite BJP doing moving heaven and earth to you know puncture this unity. George, your Ananji, uh, you know, uh, this India alliance may look to be a choir. You know, it could look to be a group song, but in reality, it's a solo song. A lot of solo songs happening within that group song. The very fact that despite so 
could be could have been a very luring proposition from the BJP side to the NCP actually. And uh, uh, Mr. Patel and uh, Mr. Pawar, Ajit Pawar has been okay on the fact that we have been considering this with with senior Pawarji for long. You know? So the discussions were happening. Despite all these things, uh, someone like Mr. Pawar, senior Pawar, have not switched side means a lot. He has some inklings from the ground. So that gives a lot of hope actually said uh, Mr. Pawar is someone uh, who has his ears on the ground. And uh, the fact that he prefers, if, even if it's a premeditated game wherein he wants his uh, nephew to be uh, on one side and he to the other side, he's still remaining to the other side means that he sees things are not clearer and it could be clearer towards the election time. Uh, the other thing uh, which a uh, uh, kind of a narrative that building up against NDA is that whoever allies with them, uh, even within the BJP also senior leaders have perished. They are nowhere at. <laughs> and uh, it's a kind of a parasitic situation wherein you, uh, so Northeastern, uh, this narrative is actually starting off from Northeastern small uh, small parties that you align with someone big like BJP, uh, you you stand a threat to be you know disseminated uh, in the long run. So so for the for your safety and for your identity to be to be safe, you need to uh, to, you need to keep your identity. So India Alliance would certainly be an insurance wherein your identities would be safe. So a lot of parties like say for example BRS in Telangana have an issue with the assembly election coming up. So towards the uh, month of January, things would be much, much clearer. Things would be much, much clearer in the sense there would be a lot of crystallizing that would happen on either side. And uh, we would be so... The challenge period is from this August till December. Uh, so this four or five month is something which is allowed should hold on. Beyond that, it would be, it would be an organic formation uh, the st they would keep adding on to the strength if it happens. Okay, so now I think we can wait for uh, the strategy coming out from Delhi, uh, the NDA uh, group where there are thirty-eight parties. On. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what it would happen. Uh, I can. We can explain. You can anticipate. You know, it would. It would. They would do a India versus Bharat kind of a thing, you know, okay. and they would bring out this something like India is a uh, India is something which uh, foreign name. Bharat is our identity and all ah, that. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah, around something like that. India versus Bharat and something like some that. Gimmick, but, some gimmick. Some gimmick they are going to get. The some gimmick they are going to get. Yeah. But that still, it's a very weak defense, actually. Uh, they are still uh, in short of an answer. Okay. So, let's hope that uh, what the India Alliance just started, that started going from Bangalore, uh, goes a long way in uh, strengthening our democracy, the great Indian democracy. Thank you, Sharad uh, Pradhanji, and thank you, Joyji, for joining us in the item. Uh, we'll continue this discussion maybe uh, by around January when, as uh, Joyji has rightly pointed out, things more clarity is brought in and more crystallization. Thank you once again. <laughs>